small modular weapons and defense in depth all caps on those major words there so you're sitting down and doing part of one part of a defense in depth analysis for a large system let's call this one a nuclear reactor just for this conversation my look into it which carried forward but as a defense in depth strategy or tactic is software version control and understanding what that means in an international standards architecture ISO standards so this is defense in depth analysis this is uh, in some of the contracts that I signed for jobs <laughs> there was a need to know but this is very high level information maybe what I'm gonna to put together for you but there is specific control system architectures and designs that have only been improved um, basically to you they would look like a cluster a computer cluster so uh, externally it would look like a supercomputer uh, usually it's an open systems environment so you're not talking a uh, Windows operating system necessarily but Windows is OSI compliant as well so defense in depth very specifically control systems so what, what have we heard about control systems control systems architectures like the power grid being susceptible um, yes it is yes it will always will be but it's not easy it's a lot harder than, than some would have you think so this consideration is part of architecture network layers network security authorizations if you are not authorized you can't come in and play so hopefully that's you know that's what your cell phone's supposed to be like that right nobody gets to steal your data but they're going to to scrape as much as they can while they're there so these are long deep considerations in one aspect but on the other aspect you just there's hardware you go out there and you buy it and you plug it in so how deep did you look at that hardware and I mentioned OSI layers because you get into at device addressing out in the you know extended it's, it's complicated not the video so this idea of defense in depth just in the software realm I mentioned version control we know how important that is. You get a bad release, you got to all of a sudden get a patch for something, and it's just become kind of a part of life. But it's always been there in a consideration, depending on <laughs> levels of interaction, I suppose. So we know this stuff. This defense in depth thing is huge. What's next? Where do you go first? Something that folks would know about Stuxnet. The virus that was put into the Iranian centrifuge system. So that is a huge system. These aren't just little centrifuges sitting out there. These are masses of strung together, high pressure, high speed vessels in, you know, huge facility. So a simple, not simple, piece of software poked in at some level of the system can innocuously sit there for a long time. So this version control idea is how you find these things. The file size was 3K yesterday and all of a sudden it's 5K. 
why did that 5k change was it authorized change well, you go and you look and you find out it's an extended file that's going to get open and closed and change so now access control becomes important who can see that into that file so defense in depth major consideration in engineering high risk elements it includes you know the workers there the the contractors there even how easy is something to fix if it has to be fixed and what's the likelihood of it having to be fixed these are again in the old days brick and mortar you used to have to look 30 50 years out and big mom and pops don't do that their 50-year outlook is to retirement, not to keeping the business running, really. I mean, yeah, they're, so defense in depth. Stuxnet is a public example of the opportunity to get there. Subtle things are being done, like a global IPv6 implementation. Media is talking about a new communications layer that's going to transport better IPv6, but that's going on at the same time because things change. So that defense in depth element is big. It's still an open item, always has been. And because of legacy systems, the vulnerabilities out there are huge. The considerations are huge. The, how the decisions are made means that a small modular weapon is safe or not from one attack vector, the software attack vector. Who has access to software layers to plant a seed? And there's lots of ways to look. Sometimes the seed is a pointer, just a simple pointer somewhere that won't be addressed, accessed until who knows? It is 60 lines of code buried somewhere in a MAC address device out there on the bus. This OSI bus that includes your IP address and the devices attached to your IP that have OSI addresses. So that's how deep in your computer can be looked. And it's just how the technology is. So access control, who can plug a device into a, com into a local computer, say an office computer. Can the office computer connect to the controls network? There is a hard boundary there in any design worthy I've seen. It's a network boundary. But I'd still call that hard. It's software configuration and monitoring. It's an access control list for devices managed down to whatever level necessary. And somewhere that device is attached to a person. Personal responsibility. Get you in a federal prison for not knowing the details of some of this. So that simple music stick you plug into your desktop PC at lunchtime could get across the network. Your computer might say, uh, you're going to get a spanking for, sit for this device. We're going to wipe it now. Thank you very much. Depending on your network admin. These are just big system considerations that folks have. And these aren't black hole. You know, they're, they're documented. They're, they're part of processes. that say this was safe enough this was enough for public consumption small modular weapons in a neighborhood are okay and again i just pointed a one attack vector from remote networks that needs to be accounted for and planned for tomorrow engineering uh what is this? Uh, like a 601 course? I don't know. And it's just 